Hello and welcome to KRSE Beyond the Ordinary Webcast Radio where we visit once again the Half Past Human Reality School right here with your host Nancy Lena. <laughs> <laughs> and that's with Cliff and that's ha- halfpasthuman.com. Cliff, you are actually at least three-fourths past human already. <laughs> well, thanks, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to change that website name. <laughs> yeah, maybe so, yeah. That's cool. Well, it's lovely to have you back. Thank you very much. And, and before we go talk about the doo-doo and gaga that's going on everywhere, I do want to tell our beautiful listeners, and they are, that as much as you say no 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 don't 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 get these alter reports <laughs> cool name by the way love the sound and the look of that alta but those reports which you so generously gave us a gift of are fantastic you put everything together and reading them and they are lengthy my gosh, <laughs> they are lengthy. The work you put in that is amazing, but it does put everything that you find and how clearly you explain it into such a huge, big context that is understandable. So I think those are invaluable. Well, I thank you for that, but uh, again, you could, having seen the reports, you could see where it would be difficult for some people to read those and maintain a positive outlook uh, if they didn't have a a nice personal underpinning. And also you could see where there would be people that would be uh, not well served by them. Too much information and and it goes against their flow, that sort of thing. That's why I advise people not to purchase them. Universe provides for us as we need. Uh, not as we necessarily want, but um, <laughs> you know, uh, you can. Uh, having read them, I, I'm sure you would see that there would be different groups of potential purchasers who really their lives wouldn't be enhanced, and they should put the money elsewhere. True, but you also provide in within them because of the way you do them. People that may not have that underpinning can start growing it. It's possible. Uh, there's, there is that big karmic burden when you mess around with, with foretelling the future here, and people that approach the whole idea of future forecasting casually kind of tick me off because they're, they need to recognize the uh, responsibility that comes with the success in doing it and because you could so easily start off these self-fulfilling loops and so on. And so we have to be very careful about what we say where. And I see a lot of people that are also engaged in this, uh, remote viewers and, and others, that I think don't necessarily have an appreciation, um, uh, at least towards, in my mind, uh, to the deeper levels of responsibility that are involved. And this is why I constantly tell everybody, no, you know, don't mess with it. It's, you know, 90 or 100 pages over the course of a, of a run, and do you really want to read that much bad news about the future? And... Probably most people don't. But it's not all bad news. No, that's true. We're starting to actually see that uh, we're starting to see positive hints of of positive change, although it's not necessarily in the near term. The seeds of it are certainly planted at this moment. Well, also with a lot that is out there, it's words and maybe facts or even half facts, but there's no real intent, good intent or understanding that's putting that out. And so it has its own frequency. You have, and it's so evident, you probably don't see it. You're humble, beautifully. But you probably do not see this, that there is such, to me, vast understanding and and a beautiful frequency about you there's compassion there's everything that combines that so in a way we're reading those reports with that good old spoonful of sugar 
Oh, I, I try very diligently to not go to the darker side of it all and just dwell on that, yes. And that, uh, it's a lot of work to do the reports, there's no question. And adding that is an extra bit of effort, but I believe it's central to the point. There wouldn't be any point in just putting out the um, reports with the larger mass of the negatives that are involved. Because, of course, that's the nature of our processing. When we run through the data and we read hundreds of millions of um, bits and pieces of information off the Internet, the way in which our system is set up, it has a tendency at its core to naturally want to concentrate on extremes in language. And since there's very little in the way of extreme good language being expressed in terms of change, there, we have a tendency to concentrate on the, the extremes of the negative. And we know it won't ever really work out as bad as it looks in the data. So to a certain extent, we have to go in and scrub that and bring it up to something closer to reality. With just the right touch of humor. <laughs> yeah, you've got you've to have a sense of humor about it. Otherwise, it's, uh, it'd just be crushing and, and we'd all be uh, suffering uh, despair all the time. Well, that's part of, uh, I think, or we know, actually, that evolution of human beings is to be able to face things without it being bad or good. You know, it's not, what you're putting out is not, you could be, look at it, it's not bad news, it's news. Uh, know, potential, what, yeah, I, I do see the point, yeah. Because yeah. if we want to know what the truth is, we have to be able to accept what information we get and know for ourselves whether it's valid or not. But if we get caught up in all the emotion of how awful it is and dark and everything, then it, we're not going to be able to to evolve beyond it and and reconcile it as it comes to our reality. Or handle what's here and what we've all contributed to creating. So it's, yeah, right. we have to do that. But anyway, I just wanted to let our listeners know that it is valuable, and I have no karmic feelings about saying, yes, these reports are valuable, because I totally believe that we each have our own course to follow, and if we take wrong turns, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but people do have a choice, and those that resonate will this, with this will go and get them and not be bummed out. Well, let's call it a must-read that's not for everybody. <laughs> so there we go. There we go. If the universe Excellent. moves you that way, there may be some reason. And as we say, you know, get your meds adjusted, rethink it a few <laughs> times, and then then come and have a look at it. Yeah. But it's um, oh, we do have some good information occasionally, and I do get uh, very positive feedback from a number of the readers. Uh, recently, we've gone through a spate of these. Uh, both George Ur at his Urban Survival site because he releases. He's sort of a, like our. Um, public service announcement point. Yes. He releases all of the free information we put out, earthquake warnings and, and major events that, that everybody's going to have to go through, but you could maybe benefit from knowing it was heading towards you. And he's gotten a few of the good uh, response emails that said, you know, on basically that, you know, yeah, we were able to save our retirement because we got out of stocks and, and this kind of thing based on warnings that we were able to give out. So... It does have good karmic implications, and there are people that certainly can benefit from it. But when I think about the way in which the planet is, is set up and skewed at the moment, 6.8 billion people, 2.5 billion or thereabouts living under uh, on 2 or $3 a day, uh, another 2 billion that are trying to exist on about 45 or $50 a day, you can see where I would certainly wish to discourage anybody in those kinds of categories, no matter where they are, from attempting to... to get our reports and, and use them in any way. It's just not pertinent to how they're living. Certainly. Yeah. But on the whole, I, I grant you, we've I've probably burned up a little bad karma with these in the sense that oh, some number of people have benefited and we've been able to sort of skew the... I, uh, I think of it in a Aikido terms as I'm out there as the person who is going to be, if you will, uh, the partner and do the throwing, the nage, and the universe is okay, the person that is going to be thrown. And the idea here is that we need to throw the social order such that when it rolls and stands back up again, it has a new appreciation for what's coming at us. We don't have to accept the changes as they are scripted from on high. We can alter our perception of them and alter our attitude towards them, and in that sense, alter the changes themselves. They're still going to come, 
but we can put our own flavor on them, if you will. And a lot of our work relates to doing just that, helping people put a new flavor on what's coming and saying, oh, oh, I don't have to pay attention to this over the next four or five months because I know on the other side of it, it's relatively meaningless, that kind of thing. Right. That's kind of what I was getting to with growing the underpinnings because, well, I think most people will in time understand that we both affect and are affected by our environment. And that is a healthy way of looking at it. When I, it made me think when I told you that you do offer this with that spoonful of sugar. On the other uh, side of it, there is so much... Um, I, I don't know, is it illusion... Well, it's all illusion, but delusion that I read a lot of things because we do also a lot of research, and there is so much sugar, it's sickeningly (laughs) affecting. It's just like, oh, don't worry about it. Everything will be fine. The earth is going to ascend, and we're going to go with it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I've got a few choice words for that opinion. (laughs) No, I come from the uh, basically from a tradition that dates back. Um, that's Chinese, and it dates back to pre-China, before China was unified. And it, and it has been called a lot of things, but basically in, in English, it's called the Complete Reality School of Taoism. And the idea is, let's not project anything on reality. Let's be nice, aware observers and see it unfold. And this way, it's constantly a surprise. Except then I, I go ahead and, and dink around with uh, predicting the future and take a lot of the surprise out of it. But <laughs> but in any event, though, it's it's nice to approach it just that way and saying, yeah, there's going to be a big earthquake, and it might be a real big earthquake, and we're probably going to have two of them here over this next week or so. But on the whole, earthquakes don't hurt people. It's bad engineering that hurts people. So pay attention now. Look around your environment see where you could be injured if the building started shaking. Is there something over your head that's going to fall and give you a bash? That kind of deal. And take care of it now. That keeps uh, coming up in your reports, doesn't it? It, That one's not going away. No, and that's for the 10th through the 12th, although I hear some of the actual professional earthquake predictors like uh, uh, Joe Berglund and others uh, are actually saying the window extends out to the 15th, I think. But our data showed that we were going to get two twin earthquakes of some size, notable in, in showing up in the press, uh, the global media stream, uh, that would cause damage and isolation, and the two earthquakes would come in over the period of basically the...